Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good day, depending on where you are um, in every part of the world. We are back with another exciting live with another former Miss Universe. This is always exciting for me um, just to sit down and, and chat to my queen sisters, find out where they are in the world, what they're getting up to. And yeah, today's one of those days. And I'm just going to um, look for her real quickly before we can start with the conversation. So, oh, there she is. Wow. She is an official. Hi, Zozi. Hi. Yes. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> Hi, Zozi. Can you see me and can you hear me? I can see you. I can hear you. Can you see ah. me? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness. Sometimes these connections, they don't always work out. They, so I'm, it, it I'm super <laughs> grateful that it did. Me too. I also worry a lot when somebody's not in, when we're not in the same country, because usually that is like so problematic. Um, let me just pin our our comments so that people know uh, what we're doing today. Okay, there we go. How are you? I'm doing great. You look so beautiful as always. Thank you, Thank you so much. You too. I mean, I don't even have to say it. I feel like you already know by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I guess I've been in this business a little bit longer than you have, but my gosh. <laughs> You're the reigning queen right now, so all hail goes to the reigning queen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Natalie. How's, how's Thailand? How's Phuket? You, you live in a holiday destination, okay? That's where we all yes. live. <laughs> how's yes, everything? for sure. But you know, it's funny. When you do live in a holiday destination, it doesn't become a holiday destination anymore. It just becomes your home. It becomes somewhere <laughs> that you just happen to live. So it's That's pretty... Funny normal to us now the fact that we live here because i've been here for so many years almost 15 years actually wow 14 that's something like that that's a very long time yeah. and how yeah so you've been? never been to thailand i've never no i've never been and it was actually i was supposed to have a trip uh to thailand very soon before the pandemic started hitting so I was very sad when that happened because I was like, oh my God. Uh, but there's definitely time to, you know, still visit Thailand, whether it be this year or next year or whenever. I really hope you do come. It's so stunning. You will love it. Me and too. I will show you around, <laughs> especially if you come down to Phuket because now I'm not in Bangkok anymore. We wow. live in Phuket, which is an island. And yeah, it's definitely like a vacation. It's like paradise. We've got the ocean and always pretty much always sunny and warm so i know nice. who to call. i know who to call when i land so at least that part is sorted out i have a tour guide <laughs> which is fantastic i you know got when, it. We, when we were on the call earlier you said um there's not a lot of cases at all you know where you are of, of covid yeah which is yeah it's, we've been really lucky and i think the way that things have been handled here in thailand were quite systematic Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's always wearing masks and the airport was shut down. In fact, we were locked down on the island for, I think, about two months. For two months, there were no flights in and out of Phuket. Mm -hmm. So it was contained quite well. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think we can all learn a lot uh, from Phuket because there's so many parts. <laughs> I just found out this morning that South Africa, my, my home country, um, is in the top five you know of, oh wow and i was like who i didn't you know expect that but um yeah it's it's quite crazy all over the world yeah and hopefully we can continue listening to our world leaders and world health leaders and do what has yes. to be done yeah so you haven't been able to go back to visit home no not yet i haven't been able to the last time i was there was for my homecoming and that was in february okay. So um, it's, been, it's been a very long time, uh, feeling um, homesick a little bit, missing everyone, but everyone is still well and safe. And so that makes me happy. So, well, that's really good to hear. And I think that's actually one of the things we wanted to talk today about 
yeah. is to how to overcome all of these feelings mm. of whether it's loneliness or isolation, worries, anxiety. There's so many things that as human beings, we have a range of emotions that we can go through, especially in such challenging times. So let's talk about that. Let's yes. dive right in. Let's do that. Um, a lot of you will know if you visit Natalie's Instagram page, you will see it's full of so much motivation. You know, she's a motivational speaker. She just speaks so much light and, and beauty into the world. And so I thought, you know, a lot of people have been asking, how do we push through the fear and anxiety? And how do we stay motivated, you know, throughout this pandemic? And so that's what we're going to be. That's one of the things that we're going to be talking about. So what has been helping you push through, um, Natalie? Like, how are you motivated during this time? Well, I'll be honest with you, when the whole thing began, it wasn't easy. And just like everybody else, I had a bit of a panic mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. Of course, thinking about the loved ones, thinking about all the people around the world who are in much worse situations than us. And, you know, the more I get into these kinds of mindfulness states, because I am studying a lot of meditation, spirituality, I'm going for retreats, I'm doing yoga regularly, and I'm also even planning to do a Reiki level one, become a certified Reiki healer. So the more I get into these states of mindfulness, the more I realize how common it is to have these negative thoughts. In fact, I've researched a little bit about that. And our minds are kind of like Teflon for positive thoughts. These positive thoughts just slide away, but it's like Velcro for negative thoughts. So it's sticky for negative thoughts. It's just the way our brains are wired. From the dawn of mankind, our brains have evolved in a way to protect us. So we always tend to go for the negative thoughts to make sure that, oh, is something safe? And of course, the fear is a natural part of that evolutionary process. And having realized that and having observed my own thoughts about how crazy they can get and how they just run away from me, if I don't keep them in check, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Sometimes it can spiral out of control. And I have seen it in myself. I have seen it in my family, with my husband, with everybody. When I talk to people, if they're being honest, they will say, yes, I worry. Yes, of course, I have um, uncertainty. I feel insecure. I'm scared that something might happen. But the best thing that we can do, I think, is be vigilant in observing what is happening inside up here <laughs> so it's kind of like when you think about your mind activity your your thoughts are like waves or like clouds they just simply cannot be stopped and understanding that fact and observing the thought as it is and just saying it's just a thought it's not reality it's something that my mind is projecting into the future which is not even real or you might be thinking about the past and something that happened. Again, it's not real because you're in the present moment. So nothing is really real except what is happening right now. So if you're becoming observant of that, the funny thing is it just happens to go away like that. Have you ever had anything like that happen to you where you, you kind of follow the train of thought and next thing you know, you're down into you know the dumpster? <laughs> I think, I think that happens to all of us, Natalie, because once you, like you said, you are stuck in, in that loophole and you just keep going and going and going and imagining, you know, scenarios that are, that are probably not even going to happen. Um, and I think that's like the greatest thing about what you just said, you know, focusing on the moment, because that's the only thing that you are in control of. And um, I was just watching a documentary the other day. I, I love quotes. I love quoting people and picking from here and there. And I was listening to a Michael Jordan one. And one of his favorite things to say is he never worries about a shot that he hasn't even taken yet. And I was like, oh, my God, because I mean, here's one of the great Brilliant basketball players in the world and they ask him do you have anxiety about the future or do you have any worries and he's like the only thing I worry about is the now because imagine wow. sitting there and worrying about a shot that I haven't even taken yet and I was like mind blown mind, so, mind blowing for sure yeah. I love that quote exactly oh my goodness that is fantastic and that exactly illustrates the point mm -hmm. you're so right um, and as you said it's so important to Stay in control of what happens on the inside because we absolutely have no control of what happens on the outside, hardly ever. 
That's right? Just like the weather. One day it could be sunny, or it could be, day, it could be rainy, it could be a storm, it could be hail, whatever it is. We have no control over that. But we have control over how we react to mm -hmm. these things, mm -hmm. how we choose to interpret it, each situation. And sometimes you can take a situation and look at it from so many different angles mm -hmm. and always find something positive. Yeah. And if you can't, always go back into the present moment and ask yourself, what problem do I have right now mm -hmm. in this present moment? Probably nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We never do have issues that are facing us right now. And so I think that's great advice, Natalie. It's something that I definitely need to work on as well, because I am somebody who tends to trail into, into the future and worry about so many different things. Oh, movies. it's not just you, Zozi. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> It is absolutely everybody, for the exception maybe of the Dalai Lama or a couple of really evolved <laughs> spiritual leaders. <laughs> and maybe yeah. Michael Jordan too. <laughs> you, you spoke a lot about spirituality. Is, it, is this something that's very close to you or is it something that you've you know, just started discovering about yourself? Well, you know, it's funny. Many people say, oh, are you a spiritual person? And I say, well, we're actually all spiritual people. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested in spirituality maybe more than other people because i believe and i don't know if you agree with me but we are eternal souls having a human experience mm -hmm. right so it's it's something that we are in these bodies temporarily mm -hmm. and if we look beyond the surface of the self of what the ego is always trying to label everything right it's labeling ourselves it's labeling other people you know, we have all of these names that we give to ourselves and to other people, like the nationality and my skin color and my race and my religion and my occupation, my profession, whatever it is. We're constantly labeling things, but that's just the surface. If you really want to get down to the truth of it all, you have to understand the true depth of who you are. And I'm learning a lot about this now and especially now, actually, I've been interested in it for many, many years, but it wasn't until recently that I started to understand it. Yeah. And through meditation, through mindfulness practices, through yoga, over the last two years, things are starting to make sense. Have you ever read these books uh, called A New Earth and the Power of Now? No, I, actually, I have oh my God. The Power of Now, but I've been, I actually have to start reading it because I, I, a lot of people have, have spoken about it. I, sh I should. Okay, so that's, that's a sign that you have to read it because <laughs> another person is telling you. Yes, absolutely. And so it's by a German author called Eckhart Tolle, and he has been a huge role model of mine for the last few years. In fact, I tried to read The Power of Now when I was Miss Universe back in 2005, and that book just went right over my head. I was just like, <laughs> what? Like, this might as well what be written in another way. Yeah, I just couldn't understand it at all. I mean, I kind of got it, but the words weren't making much sense to me. Yeah. And only in the last, I would say, three to four years that I picked up the book again and I read it. And I was like, oh, mm. all of this knowledge just became so apparent to me. And it resonated so much with my heart and my soul. And I've been following Eckhart Tolle's teachings. Mm. I'm actually taking one of his courses now online called Conscious Manifestation. Yeah. And he talks about how to manifest the things that you want in your life, not from your thoughts, not from your mind, but from the true essence, yeah. from the consciousness of your being. It's so beautiful, Zozi. I can't even <laughs> begin to tell you how beautiful it is. I'm sure I'm going to enjoy reading it because I am somebody who truly believes in the power of manifestation you know you see it you know inside in your head and in your heart and in, and in your soul you project it into the universe and it will always come back to you so i definitely know that i will enjoy reading that book for sure uh, but so thanks for the recommendation and i love that you said you didn't understand when you read it at first but you do now because th there is a, um, a very famous saying that says it's not the book that changes but the reader reading the book uh -huh. <laughs> but then as we move with age the the way that we translate and read and understand books is, is very different so it'll that's be why it's important to reread the books as that's you get older because you will see a difference a difference in how you interpret it absolutely um one of the other things that i absolutely love you for it's even in your bio when i saw it i was like yes yes queen winning winning in life this is something that you know about obviously miss universe you won 
<laughs> um, to you, queen. <laughs> but you've been winning at so many things in life uh, as well. And you wrote a book about, you know, how, how to stay winning. Uh, and um, it's, I, I would love to get my hands on the copy, by the way, just to, you know, sort of read through it. And you speak about seven um, qualities of a winner in that book. Um, you know, what, what are those qualities? Uh, of a winner like what should we what should we do in order to get to that space of yeah I'm winning in life well before I get to that I have a copy with your name on it and as soon as the type post office opens <laughs> I'm going to mail it to you because oh my goodness I have so many people waiting to receive the book and I have back orders that I cannot send out because of the post office and the planes are not flying and yeah. oh it's just well as I said you cannot control what happens on the outside. You can only control what happens on the inside. So I'm staying positive. I'm staying grateful for all of the fantastic people who have bought my book. But anyways, you will get a copy, I Thank promise. You. Thank you so much. And <laughs> of course. And to answer your questions about the qualities. Well, first of all, I want to also say that all of those seven qualities is not something you're born with. Mm. All of them, you can adapt, you can practice, you can assimilate as part of your daily rituals as part of your character so that's what makes it so exciting because it's not just people who think oh well, winning is not for me i'm just not a winner by nature or maybe i'm not lucky or maybe i don't have what it takes or they think of themselves as lazy but laziness has nothing to do with your <laughs> winning factor or your winning level the most important things are things like are you grateful right so that's quality number one being grateful every single day for all the little things around you because how can you possibly be winning if you're not grateful right now for what you have again it's all about that vibration that we are sending out there and gratitude is one of the highest vibrating i guess highest frequency vibrations including love appreciation compassion and gratitude they're really highly vibrational frequencies yeah. and if you can tune into those gratitude channels it's sort of like you're driving in a car and you're listening to a song on the radio, but you don't really like the song. So what you do is you change the tuner, you change the frequency to another channel. Yeah. So it's the same thing with gratitude. It's something you can tune into. So the moment you become observant of your thoughts and you're thinking, uh oh, I'm going the wrong way over here. Yeah. It's not really bringing up my vibration. I need to switch to the gratitude channel. And right away, think of something positive, something grateful and everybody has something grateful even breathing <laughs> could be something you, you could be grateful for right yeah. we forget no absolutely. I, i'm laughing but it's, it's funny because breathing is the base of our life it's the mm -hmm. pillar on which all life is based and yet we forget absolutely. how important it is absolutely and how to be grateful for it so gratitude things like fearlessness of course that's something that might be natural for many people and fearlessness is something i'm still personally working on i'm fearless in some things but not in everything right sometimes it takes me a couple of talks with myself like okay you can do this you can do this push your boundaries a bit further get out of your comfort zone a bit further but fearlessness is something can be practiced and you can have that quality as well another quality i talk about is resilience in the face of failure in the face of setbacks and obstacles I mean, come on, how many people go through obstacles and how many successful people have gone through obstacles, right? You know, you see. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's one successful person who hasn't gone through obstacles just by Oh, them. absolutely. You see people like Oprah Winfrey and you read her story and you find out how many hardships she had in her life and look where she ended up, right? So it's just, again, about practicing the resilience, taking an example of other successful people and following in their footsteps. And then other qualities are curiosity, which of course is very important to always keep learning and evolving. There's confidence, which some people will say, I'm not confident, but you know what? You can be confident. Confidence is self-love. If you have self-love, you will always appear confident and you will be confident about yourself. And then the last two is generosity and giving back, of course something we all can and should be doing because whatever we give, we always what, get back in return, right? So it's about that energy exchange once again. So if you're giving with that high frequency of vibration and you're giving out of all of your heart, 
without feeling like, oh, I'm just giving to be nice or to look good, yeah. then of course you're going to get so much more back mm -hmm. because the universe kind of works in that way. The universe will always provide to the givers, right? So we can keep on giving. And the last and final quality is awareness. And that just is about your mindfulness, becoming aware of your thoughts, becoming aware of other people and their feelings, being compassionate and staying aware of what's happening in the world as well, so that you're not just living in a little box. <laughs> wow. So, you know, all of these qualities, everyone can have it. Yeah. Everyone. It's great it's qualities. It's, it's very, and it does sound like something people can have. And like, I agree, you, you're not necessarily born with them because I was listening to you, like, you know, list all of those things. And I was like, okay, this I definitely wasn't born with. This I can definitely still work on. And I think it's just something that, that we, we all have. And it takes, it takes practice. So I think- For sure. Can I ask you, what would be your top three qualities out of that list? Cool. Okay, the first one, gratitude. What's gratitude, yeah. Gratitude is, should be my top three. I mean, it's in my name. It's something that I was born with. So my name is, it's a full Kosa sentence, which is my tribe. It's Sibamba Ngazo Zozimini, which means both hands. It means gratitude. It means we're thankful. And so that's, it's always something that I'm going to live by that I was taught with. So waking Wow, that's so beautiful. You have such a beautiful name. Thank, oh my you. <laughs> Thank you so Your parents much. did a good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so for me, I think, like you said, it's the smallest things. Waking up in the morning and, you know, saying, you know, thank you for life. Thank you for yeah. breath. Thank you for the shelter that I have, for the clothes that I have, for love and for life. And, yes. you know, the, the smallest things that we think, you know, because we are blessed to waking up in the morning and having a life because other people don't have it. Um, you know, being thankful for health. I was just going to say health. Mm -hmm. We just take it for granted yeah. so often. Absolutely. And the moment you remind yourself, like, oh, my God, I can see I can hear, I can walk. I mean, that's enough to make you already raise your vibration so high that you're just bursting of gratitude, yes. right? <laughs> Absolutely. And my second one, I think it's so hard to choose from the seven because they're all so good. But <laughs> I think I would say maybe um, confidence. I would say confidence in a sense that Again, it's something that I've had to work on, you know, since I was a child. I grew up very shy and I had to work on my confidence and my presence. And, you know, because when you're confident, you, you have that extra thing. You know, people want to listen to you. People want to know what you have to say. And I feel like I have so many important things to say. I have so many things I want to contribute into the world. And I feel like they will go out so much better and smoother if I'm confident in myself and if I'm confident in in what I'm saying. So confidence would be my second one. And who given you back, definitely look confident. You, thank you, you especially on that stage. My goodness, when you came out and you spoke and your walk and everything about you just yeah. screamed confidence. Like thank you. you are the role model for confidence. Thank you. I've worked on it. I've worked. And whenever people ask me, because people do ask, you know, how do you stay confident? Where do you get the confidence? It's work. As a work, every morning I wake up and I make a conscious decision to be confident, to invest in myself and my confidence and self-affirmation. I think we forget that a lot, um, to mm -hmm. affirm mm -hmm. ourselves every day when we wake up, um, to assure yourself that you are enough. Because sometimes we're not confident in situations because we don't think we are enough. And if we start working on that part of ourselves, you know, confidence starts coming in. And oh, you're so right. You're so right. And that's something that we have in common that when I was a younger self, uh, mm -hmm. especially in teenage years, yeah. I had to work on my confidence a lot too. Because I was so far away from Miss <laughs> Universe, you wouldn't even imagine. You wouldn't believe. I definitely, yeah, <laughs> was the epitome of an ugly duckling. <laughs> Never. That is not even possible. I cannot even imagine you. <laughs> well, if you, when you read my book, I have a little introduction in the, in the beginning of the book that talks about my little awkward teenage phase mm -hmm. that, um, you know, a lot of us go through. And, yeah. But that's, we blossom, right? Absolutely. We do. We do. <laughs> we blossom. Um, but, okay. And what's the third one? 
Yes. So the third one would be giving back. Is that the last one? Generosity. Yeah, yeah. Generosity, giving back, and you know, generosity. We might think is giving money, giving luxurious things, and that's you know, it's not what it is. Sometimes it's giving a piece of yourself. Sometimes it's giving time. Sometimes yeah. you know, showing acts of kindness. Um, you know, like you said, if you give um, words of kindness know, too, it could um, be just words, right? Yeah, it could be. So that would be my third one. Uh, you know, when you give out, you get an abundance. But also, it's not about giving out because you know you're gonna get something. But it's doing it just for the sake of doing it, even if you don't expect to get anything in return. You know, so. Uh, Absolutely. Well, I have seen all the work that you're doing in New York, all the volunteering oh. time that you're putting in, and it's incredible to see Thank how much you. yourself you give. And Thank does it you fill you up with joy and yeah. with? It happiness. really does. It really does. I wish I was able to do more. Obviously, with the pandemic happening, it's quite difficult to go out there and do all these physical, you know, acts. But like we said, you could do it with acts of kindness, with words. Um, you know, whatever it is that I post with whoever it is that I talk to, I can still, you know, give back in that sense. And so, yeah, it's, it 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 fills it fills my heart with with just so much happiness and gratitude. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. What are you? And favorites? you know. That's that's so, that's so beautiful. I I actually it's funny that you say that because all of the three qualities that you say for yourself, mm -hmm. I would pick exactly those three as well. <laughs> I know. I still right, but... <laughs> I still have to work on a couple of them that I would like to bring up more. For instance, awareness, like my mindfulness and thought awareness. I would like to work on more fearlessness. I would like to work on a little bit more, um, but. Yeah, those three would be my top picks as well. And I just wanted to say how easy it is to be generous. It's it's an example actually I took from my husband Dean, who almost daily he'll come to me and he'll say, "Babe, is there anything I can do for you to make your day easier or better?" Oh, so Isn't that sweet? It is. So I, know. I just almost I, cried. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, you know, I learned this from him because it's something that you're not even asked to. I'm not asking him for anything mm -hmm. to be generous, but he's coming from a place of genuine wanting to help. And sometimes when you go to a loved one and say, hey, mom, is there anything I can do today to help you? Can I make your day easier or brighter or go to your grandmother or your grandfather and just say, how can I be of service to you? Like, what can I do to help you to make you happier to make it easier for you and these kinds of questions are going to really uplift the other person it's going to uplift you and it's just a beautiful way to have relationships with people when you genuinely just want to help just want to make other people's lives better you can do this this for everybody right you can come to your co-workers your neighbors if you see somebody is a little bit stressed out or need some help offer offer help mm. it's just the best thing we can that's the only thing we have right and it's free <laughs> that's the best it's free thing. it's free you yeah. don't have to pay for it you don't have to give money <laughs> it's just free and oh, th those are those are fantastic qualities and i can't wait to get my hands on the book um just to read a little bit more and actually to find out like you said what i would like to work more on you know like you said fearlessness um it's difficult it sounds like you know, something that people, but it's difficult, you know, um, being, yes, it is. being fearless, mm -hmm. but it's an absolute great thing that you can have. So there's so many qualities as well that I, I, I probably would need to work on. Too, so. I was actually going to ask you earlier when we were talking about our fears, if you're willing to share, because I think people are a little bit maybe shy or sometimes people think that there's something wrong with them for thinking the negative thoughts. Would you be willing to share one of your biggest fears or something that you have thought of and that your mind projected that you <laughs> realized that it wasn't really true after some time? Um, I think, yeah, I think whenever I think of fears, one of my biggest fears is one, not being enough for whatever it may be, you know, when mm. it's being Miss Universe or whether um, it's being in my relationships with friends, family, just like we're not being enough for something. I think that's just one of my biggest, one of my biggest fears. And I've come to realize that I am, 
you know, in fact, enough. I, I always will be because I'm worthy. That's where it starts. It starts with our self-worth. Once you know that you are worthy, it becomes so easy for you to know that you are mm-hmm. enough. And so I think that's just one of my biggest fears. And whenever I go, will I be enough for this? And yeah. Wow. And this is that actually, other people have as well. Yeah, it's such a common thing. I even wrote a blog post about that it's on my website if people want to read it, yeah. natalieglebover.com. But it is one of the most common fears of not being enough. We always, our mind is always going to say, I am not this enough. I'm not that enough. It's, it's just part of our, it's the nature of the mind. That's it. Absolutely. But if you recognize that true essence that I was talking about, that on the inside, beyond those labels, beyond those thoughts, beyond the surface, the true essence, which is timeless, is mm-hmm. eternal, it's limitless, it's powerful. Yeah. We can be anything. We can do anything. We can absolutely. achieve absolutely anything. Absolutely. How did you come to this realization that you are enough? Um, what did you do? I was, I'm sure people would love to hear that. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I think I would definitely go back to self affirmation that is one of my biggest things i think that's that's just me waking up and consciously telling myself every day that you know you are enough um you you really are because what happens is we we let the outside world tell us who we are we let them dictate so much um about our lives and so and as much as you think you're not mindful in your subconscious you're taking in everything that people are saying about you and you start believing it and it's not true right. nobody right. knows you more than you know yourself you know you know who you are and so i think that's what i had to constantly remind myself i probably thought i wasn't enough because i've probably been told some way by someone that i'm not enough of or course. I've probably you know seen people who look like me who act like me who do things like me being told that they're not enough and so I've adapted that to myself and so it's just self affirming telling myself constantly that you know what you are you are oh my and gosh that is such a great you, piece of you, wisdom you you really are because again I'm going to go back to reading because I read a lot and I mentioned this in another live I think or was it another conversation that I have about you know a beautiful poem and a piece of reading called our deepest fear by Marianne um Williamson I've been speaking about it a lot because I read it whenever I feel that sense of not being enough or that sense of not belonging or um what's this imposter syndrome so that's what I read a lot when that happens and you know she says so much like instead of asking yourself who are you not to be you know ask who instead of asking yourself who are you to be ask yourself who are you not to be why not me why not me? you know <laughs> And that is so, so good. Yeah, say kind words to yourself. Say kind words to yourself every day. It's- I couldn't agree more. I really believe in affirmations and I know it's kind of talked about to death like by every single life coach and every single motivational speaker, mm. but it's true. That's the only way. If you think that I'm going to change my mindset or I'm going to change yeah. the way that I'm thinking I'm going to change my confidence level but you don't actually do anything about it it's mm-hmm. not going to happen you have to do these things daily and affirmations is just part of it yeah and in fact so there's two things that I want to say about affirmations real quick <laughs> sure. I've recently been watching this show by have you heard of Gaia it's it's kind of like Netflix for all of these spiritual shows and no. interesting Anyway, it's it's a really cool platform. G A I A. Okay. So you can subscribe to that and watch all of these amazing shows. Yeah. They have things about oh god, um, um quantum physics and mm. parallel universes and extraterrestrial life and like all these kinds of uh, unconventional shows. Yeah. And so one of the shows that I watch is called Inner Evolution with Dr. Bruce Lipton. He is actually the founder of New Biology. He's been able to debunk a lot of the myths that traditional biology and traditional physics mm. have put forth. And he has really discovered through scientific experiments how we shape the reality of our lives mm. just with thoughts alone. Yeah. And how our thoughts are not actually contained in our head, which is so amazing because before they used to read the brain activity by attaching all of these electrodes to the brain, but now they have a machine that hovers above your brain like a giant hair dryer mm-hmm. just going to stick your head up there and so it measures your brain web activity without touching your skin 
So it proves that we radiate these brain frequencies, just like everything else in life is a vibration, <laughs> right? Every matter and non-matter, like even like thoughts, is made of subatomic particles and mm -hmm. atoms and whatever it is. I'm not a, <laughs> a scientist, <laughs> but they vibrate, right? Yeah. So they vibrate at a certain frequency. And when they send out those vibrational frequencies, they meet up with other things around us in the field mm -hmm. that connect to it. So we can have positive interference or negative interference with other vibrating particles. Mm -hmm. And so we actually create our reality based on whatever we send out and we'll attract similar vibrations back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what he talks about is that our subconscious mind, which gets programmed between birth and age seven, when it's in theta state, right? Mm -hmm. So our brain waves also have different states. So theta state is the time in that childhood period when we absorb everything and it just sinks into our subconscious mind. We don't even realize mm. that it's sometimes it's there, right? So whatever that subconscious beliefs are, maybe somebody told you when you were a child, oh, you did a bad job at this or you're stupid or you're lazy or whatever it is. And that program is fact into your subconscious mind. And here you are in present day sending out all of these vibrations out of your subconscious mind. Mm. Isn't that incredible? It's crazy. So he said, that in order to reprogram your subconscious mind, we have to get ourselves into the theta state, which can happen through hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And it also happens when we're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So okay. we could actually listen to positive affirmations as we're falling asleep. So I have this idea that if you write down your own affirmations for whatever it is that you want to believe about yourself and record them in your own voice mm -hmm. on a, your phone, or something like that and play it on a loop as you're falling asleep, that'll be a perfect way to reprogram your subconscious mind. That is so beautiful. It's, wow. Okay, I'll actually try that out, record everything and before I go to bed, you know, just put them in and wow, and connect with myself. So I, I think absolutely I think that's absolutely perfect. What is what is your deepest fear? Like when you think about fears, like what what is it for you? And has it changed over the years or have you just had that one constant, um, you know, fear? You know, it's funny that now that you're asking me, I never thought if it had changed because mm -hmm. I never asked myself that. But I realize now that it has because before I became a mother, mm -hmm. I probably, my biggest fear was I'm not good enough for something. <laughs> just like, I think all, I think everybody at, around that age of, teenagers early 20s up until maybe even 30s we all go through this kind of fear yeah. but i think that once we get to know ourselves through maturity mm -hmm. that fear tends to lessen yeah even though it's still there sometimes i'm not gonna lie mm -hmm. i catch myself at times thinking oh but maybe i don't have enough experience or that person knows more or that person is a quantum physicist of course he has his own t you know <laughs> show on gaia <laughs> who am i you know <laughs> just things like that right mm. but i think my biggest fear now being a mother of course is something happening to my daughters or something happening to me and ha having my daughter maya growing up without a mother mm. i feel like that's just something that i catch myself at times especially in times when i have to fly on the airplane <laughs> i never had a fear of flying until i became a mom like, it's, it's weird that is so it's interesting like, that is so interesting. Yeah. I, I think because back then it was like, okay, well, so what? You know, the plane will crash and that's all right. I have, <laughs> you know, there's no, like, of course, my parents would be sad, but <laughs> it wasn't like, oh, my, now my daughter would be growing up without a mom. Like, that's, that's my thought. But anyway, just to show you how crazy thoughts can get and how out of control they can get, is we went diving, scuba diving this past weekend in PP Islands. And I haven't d done diving for about seven or eight years. So mm -hmm. I was kind of a little bit nervous. I was, we were going 15 meters underwater. And I did a little, little refresher course before, but when we submerged underwater, all of a sudden, a little bit of panic set in. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's a lot of water and <laughs> anything could happen. And my daughter is up there on the boat. She's waiting for me. So I better make sure that nothing happens because I need to come up for her. Mm -hmm. But then the moment you allow that one thought and you start identifying with that thought, it spirals out of control. Because the next thing you know, 
you know, you're drowning and your daughter is growing up without a mother. And, you know, on her wedding day, she's giving a, you know, a toast about how she wishes her mother was there. <laughs> and isn't it and crazy like, that you are thinking about all of these things and just that split crazy. second? Your mind yes, in that split like, second, everything just like... <laughs> And then as soon as I caught myself with that, I was like, whoa, whoa, okay, just stop, like, stop, press the brakes, and we're just going to um, focus on the present moment. Yeah. Ah, look how beautiful it is. Look at that fish. Mm -hmm. Listen to the sound of my breathing and the bubbles coming out, mm -hmm. right? So the moment I started focusing on the present moment, all of those thoughts disappeared. They went away. The panic went away. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important whenever you are thinking, oh, COVID, oh, my God. Ah, I'm coughing. What's happening? I have a runny nose. I'm going to die. You know, my cats are going to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the moment you start seeing yourself firing out of control, mm -hmm. just bring your attention back to the breath. Absolutely. I have another really good trick. Mm -hmm. This is something you can even try right now. So just for a second, close your eyes. Mm -hmm. and put, put your hands out in front of you like that. Okay. Just relax your hands. No, you don't have to stretch them out. Just normally, yeah. And if, with your eyes closed, if I asked you right now, mm -hmm. how do you know that you have a right hand? Would you be able to tell me how you know that? <laughs> I guess because I already <laughs> know. But how do you know? That's the question. Because I've can seen you bring it, your attention? Yeah, I've seen it so many times before, and I can feel it when I'm moving it. Okay, but if you don't move it, if you just bring your attention and your awareness mm -hmm. to your right hand, can you kind of feel the subtle sensations of maybe heat, warmth, maybe even tingling, or like, I feel like little yeah. pulsation. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so if I ask you, how do you know you have a left hand? Mm. How do you know you have a thumb? Or... Yeah. A ring finger or index finger, you will be able to, with your presence, with your consciousness, mm. bring your attention to each body part. Wow. And that is, in fact, what is the present moment? Because the only thing that's present is your breath and your body. Everything else is either past or future. Mm. Wow. So anytime that you have any of those crazy spiraling thoughts, just for one second, close your eyes. You don't even have to close your eyes, but you take a few breaths, you bring your attention to your hands. I feel like it's easiest to do it with my hands. And I'm like, aha, there it is. Okay, feel I feel my hands. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the present moment. That's body wow. awareness, right? Wow. And it just sets everything, I don't know, it centers everything. It grounds you, it calms you down. It brings you into your true essence, yep. that, that soul, right? And wow. so it's... It's so incredibly powerful. And how powerful are we as human yeah. beings? That is so crazy. I feel so lighter. It's just like, I close my eyes for like five seconds, but it feels so calm. Of course. It feels so because, calm. Because out of present moment, mm. miracles can happen. The yeah. best things in life happen out of that presence. Mm. And it's something that I also wanted to talk about today is about performing on stage when we were both at Miss Universe in our yes. respective years. I'm like How? enjoying this so much. I want, here's my, <laughs> now we're going to dive into this because I was about to say, okay, we need to dive into something, you know, pretty cool. But it actually okay. leads to that point because Adapt. when I was competing, I don't know about you, mm -hmm. I felt really present in my body. Yeah. And when I was speaking and giving my final answer, mm -hmm. it was something as if it wasn't even forming in my mind, like mm -hmm. the thoughts weren't forming in my mind. It was like, some entity came in and was speaking through me. And then I was like, oh, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> that was a really great answer. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> How did I get that? And it's so <laughs> difficult to answer. But you had a video um, up on your Instagram where you, it was, how did I win? How did I win Miss mm -hmm. Universe? And this is the question that everybody who's competing really wants to know. How do mm -hmm. I win? And what better way to hear it than from Miss Universe 2005. <laughs> so, um, let, let's walk through that video and, and, and talk about it. What does it take to win? Like, how did you win? Okay, well, I'll give you my version, but then I have to hear yours because you're <laughs> Miss Universe 2019 and the girls who are competing probably want to hear it more from you than they do from me. <laughs> but let's, let's share. Let's definitely yeah. share. So 
I have been talking about this for a long time now and always speaking about it in all my lives and in my books and in all of my courses is that, you know, gratitude is the first thing that I feel if you tune into that frequency of gratitude, yeah. you raise your vibration to the to, to match the outcome of what you want. Because essentially, when you win the crown, yeah. you, you're not actually after a crown, you're not after a title, you're after a feeling, you're after the emotion okay. that it brings you, right? Okay. So what does that emotion feel like when you win? You feel grateful, you mm -hmm. feel elated, you feel exhilarated, you feel, I don't know, what do you feel? <laughs> what did you feel when you won? All of those positive sensations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you're asking how did I feel? Um, yeah, sure. It's, <laughs> it's like such an out-of-body experience. That's quite, you know, difficult to to say one thing because it is out-of-body like that. But I think, again, I felt so much gratitude was the first thing that came to mind. I was like, I am so grateful for this moment and I'm just so happy. Um, you know, I could see my mom and my dad and my sister there and I could just imagine in that moment how South Africa was feeling, you know, after they literally exactly. said South Africa was the winner. So it was just so much right. and happiness at the same time for me. Well, this is exactly it. And mm -hmm. what most girls are after is exactly that feeling because they want to feel maybe a sense of pride, mm -hmm. a sense of accomplishment, a sense of their country or their parents celebrating with them. So all of that is... You can relate it to gratitude, you can relate it to whatever, but all of them are really high positive vibrations. So in order to win, and I'm talking win in life, in anything, whether it's winning the crown, winning, you know, having a winning relationship or having security and stability or getting that job or being successful in business, you have to match the vibrational state of your current state mm. to what you're after, the state that you're after. Yeah. So essentially, if you're after those feelings that you just described, put yourself in that state right now in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Raise your vibration to that level as often as you possibly can, mm -hmm. whether it's by visualization, whether it's by prayer, meditation, or any, any way that you can. Yeah. But also by giving back and being generous and being kind is going to raise your vibrations to feel those fuzzy, warm feels, right? Like, you just feel like, oh, this feels so good to be able to help somebody and have a genuine connection with someone. So you're raising your vibration to match exactly what you're going to get when you win. Yeah. It's actually very, very simple. Not always easy, but very simple. And this is something I'm learning in the course of that spiritual teacher I was talking about, Eckhart Tolle, Conscious Manifestation. He talks about that all the time. He says, what's your current state? You say you want a big house and lots of money and you know beautiful husband beautiful wife but what is your current state does that state reflect of the state that you actually want to receive yeah because for most people their current state is i don't have it i'm so sad and i will never reach it or they think maybe i'll reach it but i don't have it yet so i'll be happy when i reach it. that's that's the famous one i'm not happy now but i'll be happy when i reach it so what you, essentially you're doing is you're lowering your vibration in the present moment and you're sending out those wrong vibes. Yeah. Of course, you're never going to get it. Okay. So um, that's my tip just, number one. I just want to, before you continue, uh, just remind you, uh, Instagram will cut us off in like about 10 minutes time. So if we could, I know <laughs> we, we want this well of wisdom, but I'm so scared we're going to get cut off and we won't be able to save this. So um, we're just going to try and move as fast okay. as we can to wrap within the next six Absolutely. minutes. Absolutely. You let me know whenever, but that is pretty much the one tip that I wanted to give for mm -hmm. winning in anything. Winning yeah. the crown, winning in love, winning whatever it is. Yeah. So do you agree? I do. I absolutely agree. Um, you have to be there, you know, with your mind and spiritually first see it before you can actually like start doing the physical work of being practical about it. Uh, so I absolutely agree. I think that's the first step, really just visualizing it and seeing the moment and feeling it and then being practical. So what are the practical things that you did, you know, to win and to get there after you'd already Preparation. Prep, uh, after, after I won already or? 
Um, no, this is like during your your competing oh. phase um, because okay. you, you visualized it before, you've manifested it, you've seen it many times in your head. Yeah. Uh, but what are the like the practical steps that you took? Well, the preparation was definitely all laid out in a plan. Like I had it written out. Every single aspect of the competition was planned out from yes. evening gowns, runway to interview. Uh, you know, my nutrition, my fitness plan. Everything was impeccably laid out where I was putting little check marks daily about the things that I had done. And I think that's another key thing about manifestation. When you're putting check marks, it's almost like you're giving yourself that little reward and that trophy. Mm -hmm. So you're almost, you're winning every day. As, yeah. as soon as you put a check mark, you're like, okay, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's really important when you can put those check marks and assign yourself those mental trophies. Did you do something like that as well? Uh, yes. So again, from Oprah, you know, if Oprah tells you something, you listen, write everything <laughs> down, you know, put Hail it Queen Oprah. <laughs> exactly, you know, write everything down so that you can see it, you know, if you see it every day, you will constantly remind yourself. So if it's getting better at interviews, uh, getting better at my walk, like it's something that you visualize, something that you put down. So I always had a checklist um, as well for myself to say, you know, these are the things that I need to get through. Uh, this week, these are the things that I need to get through by the time this month ends. So wow. I agree. It's something that you, you put it down on paper and then you make sure that you work towards it. So I agree. Wow, you're, you're such an inspirational winner. I mean, this is really what it takes. Did you tell us? I, I'm really curious. Like, What was your mindset going into Miss Universe? Did you feel that you were going to win or did you feel like you were going to get into the top five? What was your belief? Um, I don't, it's so difficult because, you know, when you come in, there's so many incredible women from every country and these women have already won sure. in their country. So they're already winners. And so it's very difficult to sort of feel that you will win. But for me, I think it started feel. I started seeing a possibility of it. Um, maybe around about top 10, top five. I think after top five, that's when I, I kind of felt at ease with everything that I was doing. Because in my mind, I felt that like I've already done everything that I can. You know, I did my best. Uh, there's nothing more that I can do at this point. And so my heart and my mind, everything was just at ease. Um, and I, I knew I did all that I can. So I felt wow. good. I felt good. And that right there is the key, I believe. <laughs> because the moment you let go and you surrender and yeah. you just become, you stop wondering what's going to be the outcome, exactly. right? So that's, again, if you're thinking about the future, you're not staying present. Mm -hmm. And the moment you let go and surrender to whatever it is, you come out with your authenticity and yeah. being more genuine and being more real, right? And you have that winning aura. So I always tell everybody, don't focus on the outcome alone. Focus on every single step of the journey. Be present in every single step of the journey. Yeah. And you have done it. You're proof of that as well. And I'm just so glad to hear you say that. Thank, Thank you. you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadri. I'm seeing a lot of comments, you know, people saying you should come back again because <laughs> they want to listen to you you know speak about these things oh i would love that yeah absolutely i would love that too but um we're gonna have to wrap up now i want to thank you so much for your time and your wisdom i, I just knew it i knew it was gonna be great just going through your instagram and and just what you are about and the positivity that you you radiate so um thank, thank you. you thank you so much this was so fun i could go on for two three hours but i know <laughs> me too and to you zozi you are at your age it's so impressive for me to see that you are getting it and you are so in tune with your spirituality i wasn't like that when i was your age so i'm just so <laughs> impressed to see that you are I'm like wow <laughs> you are just uh, already next level <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Natalie. I appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic night and that you stay safe and that you and your family stay safe. So, um, yeah, send my love to everyone thank and thank them so much for borrowing, for borrowing me, you, for like a whole hour. <laughs> I'm sure they miss you now. <laughs> thank you, Sozi. I wish you all the best. Stay safe and all my love to your family back in South Africa. Thank you. And Everybody at Miss Universe organization, please send them a big hello from me Definitely. as well. I will. Esther's in here. I've been seeing her dropping comments. So, <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Thank Esther. You. Thank you so much, Natalie. Have a good night. Thanks so much, Zozi. Speak Bye. soon. Bye-bye.
thank you so much to everyone who joined us for this live. I don't know about you, but I feel so motivated and I feel so inspired. Um, and you can continue feeling that way by, you know, following Natalie on her page and seeing how you can stay motivated and how you can keep winning in life. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you this coming Thursday with another incredible queen. Bye.